You need to be watching these levels of the RSI, particularly this swing high here. If we're able to get the RSI over here, that's a huge play for the bulls. Hello everyone, Steve Courtney claims that a new cryptic candle has been printed on the Bitcoin chart, which should be looked and viewed carefully to better understand, decide the near future course of action. A must watch. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Anytime you see a big wick on the downside, we have momentum to the upside. Look anywhere on any chart known to man. Look no further than here. Whenever you have a wick on the upside, momentum to the downside. What did prices do after then? Plummeted. Then we had this large wick on the downside. What did prices do then? We had momentum to the upside and prices rose. You can look anywhere. Look at these large wicks here to the downside. Momentum to the upside. What did price do after this? Skyrocketed. You can see it on any time frame anywhere look for these huge wicks right here a wick all the way down to 17 something push prices up you can see it on any time frame anywhere but this was a bullish hammer candle thin body at the top little to no upper wick doesn't matter red or green but a large lower wick this represents that the bulls were starting to gain control keep in mind that previous candle was an even tug of war nobody was in control this candle bulls clearly in control and price momentum heading to the upside. We followed it up with a bullish engulfing candle, which clearly represented, hey, this is a green candle. In order for it to be a bullish engulfing candle, three things have to be true. Number one, it needs to be green. Number two, the prior body has to be red. Number three, that green body has to be bigger than the prior red body. All three of those are true, making this a bullish engulfing candle. So that game of tug of war, that cute game that was being played, which was then complete even, the bulls could, took control on this candle and they followed it up with even more muscle on the following candle. Now the bulls were in complete control, suggesting a potential continuation of the trend. What is the continuation of the trend? Well, if you look at it, it's been a clear uptrend for over a year, right? Coming out of the bottom of the bear market. So this bullish engulfing candle represented a continuation of the trend. Bulls were in control. Now we get into the candle that just printed, the hot off the press candle that has even more power than these previous candles. This candle has an extreme magnitude of potential that we've got to get to. It is also also a small body at the top. It is also no upper wick, and it also has a large lower wick, suggesting a multitude of things. Number one, we already know what a large lower wick to the downside means. That means that the bears took control, pushed prices all the way down. The bulls were like, hold on, what are you guys doing? We're gonna protect this area, which happens to be the exact same area of our indecision candle. That wick came down to 64, this came down to 64. Coincidence? I think not. So this area was bought up just like it was bought up here and protected and pushed prices back up to close up here. However, the formation of this candle has extreme magnitude and extreme power. I'm going to tell you what this candle is and what it means in a moment, but we've got to tie in the loose ends with the RSI and the stochastic RSI. So let's move our attention to the RSI and then we'll come back to revisit the candlestick and tell you what this means as well as what you should be doing with altcoins, with Bitcoin, with buying, with selling, and most importantly, what you should watch this week. Let's get to the middle of our screen. RSI. When you hear RSI, I want you to think two things, overbought and oversold. That's all I want you to remember about the RSI. What's the difference with the RSI and the stochastic RSI? The RSI moves slower, the stochastic RSI moves faster and gives you more signals. But the stochastic RSI is really about momentum. Where is our momentum? So let's get to the overbought, oversold. Bitcoin had gotten to this point where it was at 88 on the weekly scale, meaning that it was incredibly overbought, which means all of the herd, the people you want to be doing the opposite of, were buying up here when prices were at 73,000. Now, 
Subsequently, we fell to 60,000, but we'll save that for a little bit. When we were up here, we got to a point in the market where we had to take a look at the bigger picture and understand 88 on the weekly scale of the RSI is nothing to joke about. We had been at that level. You can count them on your hands. I don't mean we've been at that level in the past year, count them on your hands. I mean in Bitcoin's entire history, whatever, 14, 15 year history, we have been at that 88 level or higher. You can count how many times on your hands. It's very rare. It is incredibly rare for Bitcoin to get that overbought. So when Bitcoin was at 73,000, we put out a video calling for a correction. That's exactly what we got. We got a 15 to 20% correction, which is the same level of correction that we got here in February, 2023. 15 to 20%, same level that we got here in April, May, 2023, 15 to 20%, same level that we saw here in August, 2023, 15 to 20%, same level that we got with this large upper wick here, 15 to 20% in January, 2024. So every correction so far in the bull run has been 15 to 20%. Right on cue, we went from 73 down to 60. 15 to 20% correction, right on schedule, right on cue. Now here's what happened. With the RSI, what we saw happening was the RSI started to plummet. The RSI started to reverse trend. The RSI failed to make a higher high. It made a low here. It failed to make a higher high, making a lower high. And then it made yet another lower low and has so far failed to make a higher high. This is a downtrending area. Where is our momentum? There was one thing in particular we were looking for with our momentum. Now, we have a cross down. We had a cross down in the stochastic RSI back in the middle of March, and we were looking for confirmation. We needed the fast line and the slow line to get below 80. If you're like, Steve, what's the fast line and the slow line? Right in front of you, you have two lines that make up the stochastic RSI. It runs from an area of zero up to an area of 100. There are always two lines. One of them is a fast line and one of them is the slow line. The blue line is the fast line, which means it just is usually ahead of the curve. It moves faster than this slow line. The orange line is the slow line. Simply put, when you have the blue line on top, you have momentum to the upside. When you have the orange line on top, you have momentum to the downside. Approximately every six months, we get a stochastic RSI cross on the bottom, which happens below the 20 level and crosses back up. Those are the power moves. The same thing is true on the upside. When you have a cross down below the 80 level, case in point here, cross down below the 80 level, you can see that that's when we had that 15 to 20% correction. Cross down below the 80 level here, that's when we had that 15 to 20% correction. These don't come very often. It's every six months, five, six months, you get one of these and you've got to pay attention. What we have right before our eyes is just barely our nose dipping into this 80 area, potentially confirming a stochastic RSI cross down, but it's definitely not a, a bona fide significant move right now. You can see that it's just in the making and it just barely has its nose of the slow line. Keep in mind, the fast line is already down here, but we're starting to see some curvature. So this could be a move like this, where we have a cross back up, or a move like this, where we have a cross back up, or a move like this, where we have a cross back up. We need further evidence to identify, but we're remarkably close to confirming a potential cross down. However, we're starting to see some curvature that a potential move back to the upside could be in play. But make no mistake, what do the facts say right now? We have the orange line on top, so we have momentum to the downside. That is just a fact. Can this reverse? Absolutely. We can look at all sorts of examples of when it's done precisely that. What would make it reverse is a more important question, and it has to do with those candles we had just talked about. So let's get back to our candles. Here we are, and by the way, when we talk about this market structure in the RSI and that clip that we rolled earlier, this is all about staying fundamentally sound to the facts, and I have my indicators that I use to trade, that I use to make my decisions, and that is where I draw the line. I don't have any guesswork in my trading. I use my precise indicators and we act accordingly. But as we get back to this price action, this is remarkable. 
This powerful candle that just printed is more powerful than the other ones, and it has a lot of potential. Number one, you can see the wick. Okay, there's a wick to the downside. We obviously have momentum to the upside, just like we did here, and just like all the other candles that we have pointed out, with wicks to the downside, it's momentum to the upside, not up for debate. However, this formation is very particular. Red body, little to no upper wick, long lower wick, found at the top of a rally, especially after an indecision spinning top candle. What had happened was we had a tug of war. Nobody was in control. The bears wanted to be in control. Couldn't. Bulls wanted to be in control. Failed. Nobody was in control. Follow that up with clearly bulls in control. They regained that control. Follow that up with a bullish momentum engulfing candle. Obviously, bulls were in control. So we went from this indecision to the bulls saying, no, 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 no. We've got this. And we had this bullish engulfing candle and we followed it up with this candle. This candle has huge potential and a huge hidden message. I'm about to unveil what this candle is and what you should be doing now, whether you should be buying or selling, et cetera, et cetera. This candle is a hanging man candle, nothing to play with and has significant importance. What it means is that it represents a potential reversal in the market. Now, let me quantify. To be a hanging man, you need little to no upper wick. Check. To be a hanging man, you need a small body. Check. The hanging man can be red or green. Check. Hanging man needs to have a wick at least two times the size of a body. Check. We have checked every attribute of this hanging man. Now, what does a hanging man represent? A hanging man represents a potential reversal, a bearish reversal in price. But here's where it gets interesting. This is obviously a wick. A wick has potential to the upside. In order for this to actually be a hanging man, we need this candle that we're in right now to do several things. If it doesn't, it's failed and the bulls will be in complete control. In order for this to be a true hanging man candle, this candle that we're in right now has to print bearish. It has to print with the body below the body of this hanging man and it cannot have a big lower wick like these did. Anytime you have a big lower wick, you have momentum to the upside, which means we need the bears to take over this week's candle. We need it to print below the body of this candle and we cannot have a lower wick. We cannot have a huge lower wick. If we do that, this is a hanging man. If we don't, and this week's candle is bullish, which it definitely has potential to be, given the fact that we have this large lower wick, it will null and void any possibility that this will have a bearish reversal. It will void any possibility of a bearish reversal, and the bulls will continue to be in control. Keep in mind, the bulls have been in control since we've had that tug of war. The bulls came in and overtook two weeks in a row gaining momentum. And by the way, they overtook this candle too. Even though this is a potential hanging man, prices pushed all the way down here, which means the bears were in control. The bulls stepped in and they were like, oh, that's cute. You can go sit on the sidelines. We've got it from here. They pushed prices from that 64 level and we closed back up here. So in other words, we had a tug of war and the bulls have been in control three weeks in a row and the bears are trying to be in control with this hanging man, but that could be null and void rather quickly quickly with this candle that we're printing this week. What the bears have on its side is a potential reverse in momentum that is trying to confirm as we speak but struggling. And what the bulls have in control is, look, they've been in control the last three weeks. There's been no question about it. And we got market support right where we should have with the RSI. And we saw protection of that level and the subsequently 64 level. And we could have a potential reversal of our momentum that's playing out before our eyes. So the bears have potential to reverse trend, but there's a lot of muscle in the bulls right now. And here's what you should be doing. You need to be watching the formation of the stochastic RSI this week and how it's playing out. You need to be watching these levels of the RSI, particularly this swing high here. If we're able to get the RSI over here, that's a huge play for the bulls. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Steph Courtney. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.